Hey guys, welcome back. We are back for more a fall of porcupine. Last video was, um, yeah, it was, uh, this was quite intense, if I do say so myself. I did not expect, well, I should have expected. I mean, we're in the hospital, but darn, man. Kind of sucks. This is the first day without Irma. Man. I'm just going to leave this turned on because I don't see what's the... Just gonna see what happens. Our right, snowing outside. We have our hat here. Ah, we have our hat here. And we went with uh, Carl to help out and give food to the poor. Maybe we're gonna decorate our whole room as we progress. Like, oh look, my clothes! My clothes change, isn't it? Oh, look at that, Mr. Pigeon Finley. In your winter clothes. All right. Oh no, the beggar! The beggar doesn't even. Oh, I feel bad for this guy. Whoa! Looks like someone got out of the wrong side of bed this morning. What happened? Didn't you enjoy the hibernation fest festival? Things aren't so great right now, Ophelia. Can I help you? No. Oh. Maybe if I talk to the fisherman, I'll feel better. Oh, Mr. Pigeon's all sad about what happened yesterday. Yeah. It is tough. I'm not gonna lie. I know how it feels. Maybe if we talk to the fisherman, we will have some insights. Finley. Hello. You don't look so good. If I didn't know better, I'd say your inner river's bursting its banks. You could say that. How are things with your sister? I told her about your stream of your stream of consciousness idea. Two twigs cling together to stem the current. Be quiet for a full hour. Oh, that's a good thing. I hope it is. Soon the river students will become its master, right, Finley? You mean me? Not yet, but soon. Perhaps. Whoa. Next I'll teach how to choose the right camping chair. I don't know if I'm ready for that. <laughs> I feel like this is a guy I can talk to. It seems like just some old lazy dude who just likes fishing, but I feel like he has some good insights. Don't judge a book by its cover. Alright, let's maybe, maybe, I'll, nah, I wouldn't say if I'll feel better if I go to work. It's the place where it all happened, but we'll see, we'll see. Maybe we'll come across the Golden Retriever again. Nope, that is not the case. Maybe we'll um, come across Pia. Or Pina, was it? The flower girl. Come on, glide, glide with happiness. All right, let's just go here. I don't know what to say, man. I just feel... I also feel kind of sad. But maybe we can cheer Mr. Pigeon up doing something. Come on. Look, you're a bird. You can glide. Isn't that fun? Or... Hmm. What can we do? Maybe we talk to... Yeah, let's talk to some people. What about the old lady? Doesn't she walk around here? Oh, goodness. We haven't talked to him since. Oh, my goodness. He must have... Oh, he must have had the news as well. Oh, man. This is gonna suck. I won't even talk to the statue? I'm really not in the mood to do any talking, am I? I won't even interact with the statue. What about the, the other statue next to the hospital? Maybe I will choose to interact with it? I hope Giuliano doesn't end up just drinking all those beverage there and, and sadness. It's, that's not a good... It's not a good take. Maybe you need... Maybe what you need is a good view. Or not. 
Maybe we can talk to the big, big uh, stone there. Should be right here. Yeah, it'll be fine. Cheer up. Think on the bright side. Come on, come on. You, surely you'll talk to him. Not even the bear. I am just not in the mood for anything. Oh man. It's a bit, uh, feels like it's a bit thematic how, the, how Yuma passed away during the snow, start of snow and now it's snowy. Maybe symbolic representing the loss. Hey, I sense a dark cloud over you, young one. You had a death on your ward, right? It's never pretty, that's for sure. But the river of life flows on regardless. Let it carry you. We'll all get swept into the great sea of eternity one day. Morning, have a nice weekend. Why the gloomy face? Morning, I'm not in a great mood. Is this because of Misty Calma? I'm sorry, kid, really. I like the old lady too. I was hoping I'd feel better after the weekend. Well, I guess you're just one of those people who feels a lot for others. Just make sure it doesn't become a problem for you. Death's a part of our profession, kid. Try to focus. There's enough living people around here who need your help. I get it though. They always say that first death rarely sticks with you. Yeah, maybe you're right. I'll focus and try my best. That's the spirit. <sighs> At least I have people trying to give me some advice. It's good to have someone to will try and cheer you up. Free words and having no one tell you anything at all. Sometimes that's also necessary just to. Finley, I heard the news this morning. Do you want to talk? Maybe grab a coffee or something? Oh, Mia's such a sweetheart. No, I want to get my work done first. Okay, if you want to talk later, just come and find me, okay? Oh, there she is. Good morning, Finley. How are you? All right, I think. A patient died yesterday. You're patient. I imagine your must death is still on your mind. Ever till this, I would ask that you don't let your performance levels drop. We can't let these things affect our work. Got it. You can rely on me. You know the drill. We'll talk again once you finish treating your patients. Try to make this a good day, Finley, in spite of everything. Good luck. Oh, and one more thing. Irma died of complications from pneumonia. She was old, her immune system just couldn't hold everything off. She remained stable for a while. However, her condition worsened during her stay here. These things happen sometimes. The incident with the water damage in her room probably didn't help her either. What I'm trying to say is, you did nothing wrong. You even made a note, note to that effect in my report. I even made a note to that effect in my report. I signed you to treat Irma, and that was the right decision. I'm sure of it. Oh man. Oh man, even I'm starting to tear up. Even the strict lady. I wouldn't say she's a bad girl. Not at all. Nothing. She's far from that, actually. But she is very strict, and she doesn't compliment easily. But this one right here, man, she was trying to comfort Finley, man, even that makes me tear up. All right, let's see. Man, I'm already tearing up. I have a soft spot for these things. Uh, I'll be making her memorial figurine today. Gonna make sure it's a good one. Come by anytime if you need to talk, okay? Aww. Dude, I'm, I'm just tearing up. Look, look at all the affection Finley is getting from Mia, Pina, Ingrid. She's just getting all of the support. That feels so nice. I feel really bad for Finley. Ah, all right, just focus. There's people that still depends on us. 301. Let's go. Let's go, 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 go. It's a pen, pen, a pencil. What does that mean, dude? I never played that game before. Anyways, you're Emma, right? 
Okay. Miss Emma, strawberry yogurt, right? No. I'm Emma Smith. All oh, right, that's what it says here. I must have read it wrong. How are you feeling, Emma Smith? I miss my home. And I've got a tummy ache, too. You did get some pills, didn't you? But it's still not better yet. No. All right, let's take a closer look at what's up with your tummy, then. It's not the thing that I'm thinking it is, right? Okay. All right. I should be able to survive this. in the right order then that means the brain and the this maybe oh, that turned out well I'm close maybe this has to be like this it's like this Okay, we're getting closer, boys. That really means we just have to swap this. And voila! Good stuff! Let's go! An A, give me an A! Yeah! I think your pain is because of your food allergy. I read that you're not allowed to eat certain things, is that right? Yes. So are you watching what you eat then? Yeah, but... What is it, Emma? Well, Gerda said that after the hibernation festival, you can eat as many nuts as you want. Is Gerda your mom? No, my mom's name is Mom, and she's away. <laughs> so who's Gerda then? Gerda Niestork. I always visit her when I'm homesick. She's a doctor like you. Wait a minute, do you mean Dr. Gniestorf? Yeah. Can you do me a favor, Emma? Okay. Please don't eat any more nuts. I'm sorry, but your tummy doesn't like nuts, not even after the hibernation festival. Oh, it's mean, I know, but your tummy aches are mean too, aren't they? Yes, so you keep up the nuts and we'll think of some nice things for you and your tummy to eat, okay? Yeah, okay. Aww, she's a kid. She's a cute owl. She looks like a baby. Alright. Oh man. We're at the grumpy one, the P33. I'll make my way to you. What about this guy? How is he doing? The medication. Good morning, Miss Van Halen. Is it that time already? Your colleague said you'd be checking in on me again today. Well, it looks like she was right. Shall we get straight to it? I'm sure you want to get back home too. All right, let's do this. I hate this thing. Makes my head hurt. Hmm. Really does make my head hurt. Really does make my head hurt. <laughs> oh, hold up, hold up. I think I'm. No. No, I'm, I'm seeing this wrong. Pull up. Then. No. Um. Ah. <laughs> Maybe if I do. No. What was the purpose behind this, anyways? So, I'm behind on red. How can I be behind red? Oh wait, no, 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 no. I have too much of red. This should fix it. And now the only issue is orange and pink. But I think if we do it twice, it should fix itself. Like one, two. See, it's fixed. Okay, this should give me an A, right? Uh, 
Okay, let's go! Yep, I'm seeing a significant improvement. You know what? I'm actually feeling a lot better today. Better than I have in years. I feel like I'm really aware of my surroundings again. Sounds like the medication is doing its job. Yes, but I think there's more to it than that. I managed to talk to Dr. Gautera again. And it was like he tore down a wall inside me. Suddenly I saw everything I used to think was important in a different light. I decided to change my life around completely. I don't want to end up here again. I want to be able to focus on other things. Instead of just living for my job, I called my boss this morning and requested for week four weeks off. That's great. That's not what she thought. She threatened to fire me on the spot. Oh, I'm sorry. Don't be. I'm the I, I am the island. I am the sea. I may be unemployed, but I don't care at all, and that's great. I'll do my exercises and follow my heart more. Thank you for helping me. I'll make sure to thank Dr. Gautet again before I leave too. Have a great day, and I look after yourself. Ah, uh, the guy, this guy was burdened with, with the weight of his job, just choking him up. He couldn't even do anything else at night. It's really understandable. Seriously, good for him, right? Good for him, man. Let's go to P33. Alright, time to have a battle with this lady. Now, my dear colleague, what's your assessment of your health status? My withdrawal symptoms are diminishing, and so is so the pain. <laughs> Good. Do you mind if I examine you? That's what I'm here for. <laughs> well, at least. Oh god, it's one of these again. Oh, C. D. V. I. C. V. A. W. R. C. K. H. M. Oh, did I get an A? Yeah. No. Oh, my first triple A, guys. Oh, my first triple A. We're going to keep increasing your vitamin B1 and energy intake. Your liver's on the event. Are you sure? Nonsense. My liver's had it. The readings are clear. Really? You came to us just in time. Feel free to take a look for yourself. We'll have to keep you here for a few more days for observation. If you want to keep on living, you need to keep up the alcohol. Forever. <laughs> Clear, honest words. I like it. Maybe something will come of you after all in the distance far off future. Hey, that's a compliment, eh? right? But what I do or don't do is none of your business, <laughs> understand? <laughs> I'm giving you my medical opinion. What you do with it is entirely up to you. <laughs> good job, Finley. That's a good response. Ah, uh, that's a good stuff. Good job, Finley. You handle it very well. Now let's go to give. Let's go get some compliments from Dr. Kurowski. Wait, isn't she maybe here? Maybe she's here. Oh no, she's not there. Oh wait, was that maybe the night shifts only when she goes there? Yeah, she's here, huh? Let's go. Look what I did. All done. Yep. It took you longer than usual today. But given the circumstances, I'm willing to turn a blind eye to that. Oh, damn. Let's see. Look, look what I did. Look what I got. Let's go. What have you got for me today? I don't have anything for you. Dr. Tuba was asking after you. Oh, really? Why? I couldn't say. However, he did ask if I could give you the rest of the day off. I'm not happy about it, but I said yes. I guess it must be something important then. Do you think I should go to his office? You can if you like, but you won't find him there. How do you know? Because he's just made himself comfortable in our break room. Oh, strange. That's just the way he is. I guess I'll pop in and see him then. As you wish. Didn't you have anything to say? The moment I finally get a AAA, I get nothing, no remarks? Man. Hello. Finley, there you are. Thank you for coming. Sure, Dr. Teobald, what can I do for you? Nothing, nothing. But I want to talk to you. 
Oh God, I'm kind of nervous. First of all, I would like to thank you. You've done an excellent job these past few days. Did I? Thanks. Is that all you wanted? No, not at all. I heard about Irma de Calma's passing, of course. A tragedy, tru truly. Like so many others here in Porcupine, I knew Irma well and liked her a lot. I'll miss her very much, the whole town will. But you were the one who looked after her and were there for her in her final days. Is Irma the first patient who's died under your care? Yeah. I'm sorry to hear that. It's not uncommon to struggle getting your... your getting... It's not uncommon... It's not an uncommon to struggle getting them off of your mind. I think there was a typo it, the first time. I still remember my first too. I think I know what you mean. <laughs> I still think about Miss Calm a lot. Just try not to let those thoughts affect you too much. After all, there are still plenty of other people depending on your help. Other people depending on your help, yeah. Don't get distracted from looking out for them. It's Irma's funeral service this afternoon. It will be held at Gilbert's. Giuliano's hosts most of the funerals in this town. Oh, this town. Oh, it's gonna be hard looking at him. I'm sure this one will be especially hard for him. You should be there. You will feel better afterward, believe me. You mean I can go to the service? You are excused for the rest of the day. And I'm sure Miss DeCalma would have invited you anyway. Okay then, I'll be there. Thank you, Dr. Theobald. No need to thank me, Finley. Say goodbye to the old lady for me. Oh, I feel like crying. See you again tomorrow. Give my regards to Olirma, all right? And please give my condolences to Guliana as well. Oh, Man. The tears are not yet over, I guess. <clears throat> you wanna talk? Oh, thought she wanted to talk. Guess I'll be leaving. I'll take the elevator. Oh, man. Oh. Don't I drop by Pina first to build a figurine? Take care, kiddo. And don't slip on the snow. I already pulled something in my bag this morning. Okay. Cool, cool, cool. Oh, man. I don't like funerals. I've been to one. Didn't really like it. Didn't feel to me like it was a genuine funeral. Or maybe that was just my perception because everything looks so gloomy. I mean, makes sense. I mean, it's a funeral after all. Ba, 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 ba. Just meditate on the good sides. On the good side. There's a town over there, though. Wait, is that actually where I'm supposed to be going? But you know what? I'll grab them some coffee. Can I interest you in a hot cup of coffee? Perhaps a tea or a saffron roll? No thanks. Sorry, I've got somewhere to be. Sure thing. Oh, come on. Okay. Let's go. Oh. That means I have to go down road, right? I still don't feel that well to interact with the statue. Since I like making a whole bunch of... Oh, man. Oh. Let's go. Oh, man. Oh, man. So, you're here too, young one. It's good to see you. The roller coaster of life never stops, does it? A few days ago, we gathered to celebrate. Today, we've gathered to weep. Oh, <laughs> Finley. Hey, Guiliano. I'm so sorry. Oh. So you were telling him how you're gonna do it all. You're gonna make her be better. And then, oh, I, I, fear, I feel you, Philly. I wish I had done more. 
Benny. It's okay. Thank you for coming. I know we haven't known each other for long, but it means a lot to me. Please, make yourself at home. There's food and drink. Go ahead, take a seat. Just... Make yourself at home. Is there really nothing I can do for you? Come to think of it. There is one thing, actually. Anything you want, what is it? I think there's a colleague of yours here, too. He didn't hang around long. He just stood in the corner and didn't talk to anyone. Then I think he went out the back door. I haven't seen him since. Could you go see if he's still there? I checked myself, but I've got my hands full. Sorry, here I am asking for your help again. It's no problem, Juliana. I'd be happy to do that for you. Thank you. Oh. Oh. I'm sure Pina made the figurine. That's such a nice tradition. I'm proud of you, Pina. Pa. Did you know Irma? Of course. I love stopping to chat to her during my rounds. She was always sitting at her window with a plate of cookies next to her. She always made me coffee on cold days. Oh, I'd love one of her coffees right now. Irma, I can't believe she just died like that. It's so unfair. Pina! Whoa, you're here. Sorry, Finley. I know how much you like Irma. How are you feeling? Are you okay? Yeah, I'm fine. Just happy I could be here today. Me too, even if it has been stressful for me. But I'd do anything for Irma. If there's anything I can do for you, just say you, okay? Hey, Finley. Ted, you're here too. Of course, I've really fallen in love with this little bar. I didn't know there was a funeral today. And I didn't know this, the disease at all. But I'd still like to be here for the wake. I'm sure Juliana will be glad to see you. I hope so. So that's probably Carl, isn't it? No! Oh. What? What? Oh, is this gonna be a field trip? Oh. But what happened to my clothes? Look at my clothes. It's invisible. It's bugging the game. Gregor, you're here too. Get lost, kid. Don't you want to come inside? The service is about to start. No. There's food and drink too. Lots of people are here. Leave me alone. Okay. Something I can do for this guy? What can I do with this for this guy? Look, my where did my clothes go? I'm practically a ghost. How did this guy know Irma, I wonder? It's all my fault. Oh, oh I know, I know what he's guilty about because he didn't fix the pipe sooner. He's blaming himself. What do you mean? I'm doing the best I can. I know the hospital relies on me. I'm the one who's supposed to look after it after all. Oh, If the old lady hadn't gotten sicker, that water damage hadn't happened. Oh, by just taking better care of the hospital. Oh, you've been doing your best, buddy. It's the hospital's fault for not, for not freaking hiring more people. You, you, you did your best. It's no wonder you get a burnout and all of that. Then maybe she wouldn't have. No, that's not. Oh, this guy. This is my burden to bear. I'll never forgive myself. All those people in there. I see the way they look at me. They know it's my fault. I don't think they see it that way. I think that's your, that's you wanting for them to see you that way. It's your own perception. They know it's my fault. It's not your fault. I felt the same way. I was the one treating her right up until the end. I still believe she'd get better. I didn't want to face the fact that she was going to die. But in the moment she passed, I knew she was at peace with it. She was old, her body was weak, and she was happy. She didn't want people looking after her all the time. And that's okay. I did my best, and you did too. But sometimes things crumble and collapse anyway. Sometimes we have to say goodbye to people. Sometimes we can't help them. I'm going in now. You can come with me if you want. 
I can't. I'm gonna stay here. Okay. But if you change your mind, just know that you'll be welcome. Sure, whatever. I should go. I don't want to disturb the bereaved. You should do what feels right for you. No one's forcing you to stay. Yeah, you're right. Let's go in. If we go in at the same time, they won't all be staring at me. And I can slip away quickly if I need to. Sounds good. Oh. Oh. Man. Oh. Oh, oh, oh. This guy. Is this guy... Did he overhear that just to cause trouble now? That's my cynical aspect of me. Is ready to assume that he's going to use this to throw dirt on the hospital. How it was my fault. Or he might have been related to Irma. And genuinely realized how we both did our best to care for her. You never know what goes inside, people, inside people's head like that. Did you find him? Yes, he's the janitor at the hospital. But he doesn't want to come in. I think he needs some time to himself. I think we all do. I'm glad he's here though. Speaking of which, how are you holding up? I'm coping. But please let me know if there's anything I can do. I will, my friend. Please sit down. It's about to start. Wow, he's handling much well than I am. Or at least much well than Finley is. Like he already got back on his feet really quick. But so did Finley though. But just to note it, it's, it's, it's his mom after all. I'm not ready yet. Sure, take your time. Is there anyone I can talk to? Can I go at the back again? Maybe I can speak to the to that dude. I should talk to Giuliano. The funeral's probably just about to start. Ah! Can I go up here? Oh my! There's someone in the back? Nope. What about up here? Ooh. Oh. Interesting. We all right, because there's nothing more to do. Time to start the funeral. Sit down, dear guests. Could I have your attention for for a moment? Uh, I'm I'm still kind of surprised. My my clothes are still invisible. Thank you all for coming. I can barely bring myself to speak. But last night, Irma, my dear mother, passed away. She's, she was a real talker and always telling stories. And she was surrounded by people who loved her. That's you guys. Thanks for that, all of you. When, when I was little, she taught me to play an instrument. She practiced with me. And I hated every second of it. But, but when I was playing, her eyes would just light up. I wish you could look at me that way again. Oh. I want to play a very special song for you. A song Irma requested every time I pick that instrument up. Oh, I'm gonna cry. Don't mind me, just invisible clothes. <clears throat> Sorry, that frog. That probably looks so... I remember one day it was really frosty when I had to deliver my letters. I slipped on a patch of ice. My whole meal bag fell into the river with all the letters are still inside of it. And I tore my cruciate ligament. Irma not only helped me fish every single letter out of the river, she even dried them, restored them, and delivered them for me. Irma worked with my parents in a restaurant. 
things had been going downhill for a while, then Irma came up with a new dish. Rainbow Beet Gradin. It was a hit. Before long, it was the only dish anyone wanted. Irma and I used to play Beckhamon together every Thursday in the summer. Aww. How did you know Irma, Finney? I, um... Oh, I'll tell you how that squirt knew Irma. Oh, no. He's the one who let her die. Oh, no. He chose to go down that road. He chose to go down that road. It's the truth. What truth? Is the Irma was in great shape. Then one day, she just bends over, sprains an ankle, ends up in the hospital. And a few days later, suddenly she's sick real sick and then she just dies i'm telling you it's all that guy's fault him and all the staff at that awful awful hospital i just heard them talking about it right now they're letting the hospital deteriorate it's so bad the folks who go there pick up new diseases in the wards irma didn't even have pneumonia until they had to, took her to that dump until they took her to that dump i'm telling you irma didn't just die she was murdered there if St. Ursula wasn't so useless, Irma would still be with us today. We'd be celebrating, not mourning. Everyone who works there should stand up and take the blame for this. We'd all, we'd all be better off if the hospital was torn down and never darken our skyline again. Bro, this guy is so bitter. Rob, that's a crock of a nonsense. Nah, hold on. Maybe he's got a point? Oh no. Yeah, St. Ursula is a danger to, uh, to us all. That's right. We need to run these murders out of town. This guy. He's... I don't know. He's, what's, he's so overwhelmed by the past of someone dear to him who, who passed away that he's consumed with anger and, and hatred and resentment and bitter, bitterness. It's, these aren't noble acts of trying to slay an evil. It's just... His agenda that he's shoving in a way that's very unhealthy. Like he has a very distorted perception of the of the world around him, and he's putting that justice upon someone that, yeah, all these new staff workers they they're doing their best, and he's just held on by the past. So he sees everyone new in his current environment as those people from the past. That's what I think. He just sees everyone as enemies. Like he's still stuck in the past. Maybe it would be better that way. Look around you. Do you see anyone from the hospital here except for this clown? Exactly. Don't even have the nerve to come to her funeral. Because they know it's their fault. Plain as the nose on your face. But quiet everyone. Please. This isn't about pointing the finger at anyone. This isn't about St. Ursula's. It's about Irma, my mother, your friend. Yeah. Finley. Y yeah? I'm sorry to have to ask you this. Oh, he wants me to leave. But perhaps it would be best if you leave. But please, I don't want this argument to ruin Irma's memorial. I'll make it up to you, I promise. Let's talk later. Okay. Oh. Oh. This is so awful. What kind of... Oh man, that didn't go how I expected. I got a phone call. It looks like my cell phone had no reception at Gilbert's. Me and Carl both tried to call me. I'll probably call Mia back because she was worried for me. Not that Carl wasn't, but like since Mia approached me first. Hey, Finley. Thanks for calling me back. I was worried when I saw you today. Are you okay? Oh. I'd be lying if I said I was. Oh, I um, I don't know if it'll help, but I actually have plans for tonight. I think I need to get my mind off things, and I'm guessing you might want to as well. Oh, if you come along, we could help each other. Pina will be there too. Oh, I know, the figurine, isn't it? Sure, why not? Cool. I just got off work. I'm standing in the middle of the town square. Perfect, I'm heading your way now. Let's meet at the hospital entrance, okay? All right, see you soon. Should I? Can I call Carl? Whoa! Whoa, I'm pretty laggy today. Hey, my clothes are back. 
but yeah, that that guy, like, it's it's, uh, it's like you know when someone dear to you pass away. You no, know, our first thought is like, what could could we have done, and who do we throw the blame on, and would have changed if things were different, or if certain someone didn't exist. Like, I don't think that's the right thought to look at someone who passed away, especially someone dear to you. I think the right way of of thinking about it is what kind of things can I do now to live in this person's honor so that I can live proudly and know that the person who was dear to me who passed away will also look at me proudly and I don't think the person that was dear to the bulldog guy I forgot his name so I'm just gonna say bulldog but I don't think that person would have wanted him to be so bitter and resentful to, to the point where he's spreading all of this hate and mourning and grief into the wrong unhealthy way towards others that doesn't really help the people around you it makes them worse it makes them also become very angry and filled with grief and sorrow i don't think that's the kind of thing you want to live properly in life so whether well, it's just me you know obviously things are a bit more complicated and there's way more things that plays into into account but these are my first impressions based on the current circumstances in this game and he's talking to the statue again i hope your evening went went better than mine yeah i was gonna call carl but i feel like mia because carl already has like he seems to fit in really well like he's very well res respected and people look up to him in the hospital but mia mia seems like a little bit on the same boat as me in the sense of that she's still struggling to find friends and to find herself into this town. So that's why I thought of calling her as well. Carl always seems like he's going to pull through. And me and Mia, especially Mia as well, she feels like she also needs help. Just as much as I need help, or Finley does. So that's why I just thought Mia would be the right call right now. She also seems like the, the more sensible type. So I'm very interested to see what her input is when it comes to these things. Is the funeral over already? Dr. Kuroski told me you were there. Sure was. There was an argument. People said it was my fault your mother died. What? I wanted to explain myself but didn't get a chance. That's so mean. It makes me so angry. Yeah. Can we change the subject maybe? Anything special going on in your life? Well, today's my day, my stage debut. Before we continue, I just want to say, yeah, now that I think about it, but what happened if I called Carl and I told him what happened? Because knowing how he behaves in the bar, you know, it might uh, cause another argument unless Carl also changed and reflected upon his actions. But well, yeah, that would have probably also impacted the kind of, I don't know, route we would be going in the game. Well, anyways, well, today's my stage debut. What do you mean? I'm rehearsing with the Porcupine Amateur Dramatics group for the first time. Wanna come watch? I want to get used to having an audience. Do I need to do anything? Watch, listen, not. And don't be too harsh a critic. <laughs> I can do that. Yay, let's go. The rehearsal's taking place on the small stage in the park. All right, let's go. In the park? Small stage in the park. What park? I thought this was a park. Well, it's the entrance of the hospital, but it looks like a park. Alright. Um, I don't know if I'm going the right way. I'm pretty... Maybe... In the park. So it's towards the city, right? I'm just gonna keep gliding. I mean, this looks like a park to me. Wait, never mind. <clears throat> now that parks have uh, broken down vending machines over there. <laughs> Alright, maybe this isn't the park. Maybe the park is over there. Probably near where the basketball area is, where we played with Mia. Which is all the way to the left. What the hell happened to Mia face? Did you see that? Alright. 
I'm assuming Mia will uh, tell me if I'm going the wrong way, right? Man, there's still people there. Are we there yet? We are there when I say we're there. Did you know in Germany? I don't know if it's true. I heard it from someone in Germany. Maybe they were messing with me. But they said that the people in Germany, they call pigeons the rats of the sky. Because they're everywhere. They poop everywhere. So it's like a big nuisance to them. Nuisance. I don't know if that's true. But I thought it was hilarious how they describe pigeons as rats from the sky. <laughs> Look, what have the pigeons done that inflicted... What? Mia? Oh. What have the pigeons done that they inflicted trauma upon the people? Or more like frustration. I know with seagulls, apparently, I'm not sure if it's true. I gotta check again. But seagulls, they're also a nuisance. But like, if you were to eradicate all seagulls today, they would have no impact on the ecosystem. Maybe a Google will give that a quick check, but I thought it was interesting. Is that guy over there still there? Oh, he's gone. Mia, are we going the right way, girl? Did I pass it? Was I distracted? What? It's not this one over here. Oh. Okay. Mia, you could have opened your mouth, girl. I don't know where the park is. I've just been running around. Okay, maybe I needed to... Oh, wait, is it the park? Oh, no, that's like a playground. Where's the trees? Where's the benches? Where's the na nature? Uh, Mia just stood there, like, just watching me. Alright. Come on, Mia. I know where the... I know where it is now. Because if it's not there, I don't, I don't know where. Probably down here, right? Good light. Alrighty then. Everything looks so empty and quiet, and I don't see anyone walking around. Except me and Mia, you know? But. Is it like midnight right now? Oh! Oh wow! I can enter here. Oh, Mia's not there. Okay then, I just I can just enter, check her out, and just leave. <laughs> it seems a little bit awkward there. Anyways. Alright, a tree, a bench. But that doesn't constitute a park, huh? It needs to be bigger. Maybe I misread. Oh man. Even the, the store is... Oh, never mind. It looked like it was close, but guess not. Aha, uh -huh, trees. We're we going the right way? <clears throat> are we there yet? Oh, these these houses are look fancy. These are some fancy houses. A rich, rich neighborhood, huh? Okay. Maybe it wasn't this side. Maybe it was all the way to the right side of the hospital. Oh yeah, it's the big, big, big mansion looking building. Oh, oh, here was the playground. I thought the playground was elsewhere. Yeah? Oh, 
Am I not going the right way then? Okay. Oh, I think we reached it, right? That was a long loading. This looks like a park, right? Yeah, let's go! Pina, weren't you in the other building just now? Did you just teleport? Maybe your twin didn't die after all. Mia, I'm so glad you came. And you brought Finley with you too. Yes, I asked if you wanted to come. But just to watch. Watching? Nonsense. Oh no. You're just in time. <laughs> One of our members dropped out today. Oh, how convenient. Caught a flu at the hibernation festival or something. Oh no, can we still rehearse without them? Sure we can. You've bought the perfect replacement. But... Oh yes, Finley, please say you'll join in. I'm sure that's just what I need to feel more comfortable in my first row. I, um... <laughs> All right. <laughs> Yay! <laughs> Finley, the pushover! <laughs> Ooh, I was in a theater group in elementary school, but I might be a little rusty. What's the play? Will it even work with someone with new in the row? That what's, that's what's so great. We're an improve, we're an improvision troupe. <laughs> Improvising troupe. We give everyone a role at the start of the show, then just see what happens. And tonight we've got a, something very special in store. A terrible crime that needs solving. Mwahahaha, I'm scared already. You're telling me. And you, Finley, are going to be our detective, the private eye. The guy who was a little too tough for the police. You're basically the referee. It'll be great practice for the rest of the group. Oh, okay, I hope I can pull this off. I know you can. This is gonna be great. Is everyone ready? Yep. I'm already pumped. Hehe. <laughs> Let's go. <laughs> Those cats and dogs with, like, basic NPCs that are... <laughs> All right, you'll all be been given a brief on your roles. Any questions? Let's know. Good. Folks, we've got two new additions today. So to celebrate, I've come up with something special. Listen up, everyone. We open on an old hospital. It's six in the morning. There's a storm outside. The rain's coming down in buckets ass. One by one, you enter the building. Shortly after the shift begins, we hear the chief physician's voice break into a horrifying scream. Oh, um. Ah. Come on, you can do better than that. Let me feel your terror. Ah. <laughs> Much better. A body has been found in the chief physician's office. But it's not just any body. It's the body of the chief physician's personal assistant. You gather in to the break room. The fresh coffee is still bubbling in the spot when the door flies open one more, once more. Into the room strides none, none other than the city's most famous detective. Finley, that's your cue. <laughs> Look at this little bird. How can this little bird be a detective? His face is grave. His steps determined. And so the questioning begins. Finley, you just let me know when you're ready to give your verdict, okay? Okay. All right, folks. Let the interrogation begin. Oh, I think I know. Yeah. All right, then. Start with you, boy. I'd love to help, but I've been busy all morning. Where were you at the alleged time of the murder? Busy, eh? Wait, what? Sometimes last night, that damn pipe in the basement burst again. That's the third time this month. Not that anyone cares. Everything's always underwater. So I spent the whole morning on my hands and knees down there, tinkering around. And then I thought, what's that strange object in the water? And hey, presto, I had the murder weapon in my hand. Not that I knew that at the time, obviously. Where were you at the time, okay? Did you notice anything unusual? I don't know if this is relevant, but I talked to the guy a lot. Out on the stairs after work, he's the only guy here that smokes apart from me. Two days ago, he was saying some weird stuff. Thought someone was following him, stuff like that. I managed to calm him down, told him he was imagining it. Turns out he wasn't. Alright, thanks for the tip. <coughs> Maybe the ambulance driver. He was always kind of weird when it comes to the PA. Saw him sitting in front of the guy's office again yesterday. Don't know if that helps. 
<clears throat> I'll come back to you later. Yeah, whatever. <laughs> It's really terrible what happened. I still can't believe it. I was even here when the crime took place and I still couldn't do anything. Where were you at the time of the murder? Where in the building were you at the time of the crime? I always come in extra early because I like to work in peace before the hustle and bustle starts. So I sat in my office all morning going through the patient's records. I haven't been here long. I was eager for a fresh start after my previous hospital and I get along very well with everyone but I'm still trying to get up to speed. Did you notice anything unusual? Anything unusual? As you may already know, I'm pretty new here, so I probably wouldn't even notice if there was something out of the ordinary. Ah, but what? But maybe that will help you provide a more objective view than your colleagues. Yes, I suppose so. Do you suspect anyone? I don't want to make any false accusations, but there is one thing as it happens. The chief physician came to see me a few days ago. She asked me to keep an eye on the janitor. I think he was seen hanging around my floor a few times, heading into the storeroom. Some people suspect him of stealing medication. And have you noticed anything? No, I've never seen him there. But maybe the murder victim caught him in the act. I wouldn't wish that on anyone, truly. I mainly stay out of his way since my boss pointed out her suspicions to me. I know she said to keep an eye on him, but I just always get shivers. Down my spine at the idea of having dealing with a criminal. Hmm. Where in the building were you at the time of the crime? I always come in extra early because I like to work and stuff. Okay, so he's just repeating this. I thought if I chose this dialogue again, there would be more talks. Come back later. Yes, I'm happy to help if I can. So you are a newbie. You're... What were you again? With what? Sometime last night, the damn pipe in the basement burst again. Okay, so it's like the... The person that fixes stuff. Okay, cool. Let's talk to this black cat. Or wolf. I don't know how that could have happened. It was the chief physician. I'm sure of it. You've got to believe me. She would have done anything for him, but she swept that under the table. If he threatened her with it, she wouldn't hesitate to resort to such means. Anything to preserve her career. I did see her leaving the building last night. When I was just starting my night shift, but doesn't mean anything at all. Where were you? And where were you at the time of the crime? Me? I was only here for a cigarette break. I just got back from the night shift. And I was going to go straight home after that. Did you notice anything unusual? Is there anything else that might be relevant besides your theories? Well, I don't know if it's really relevant, but before the PA started here, he worked at another hospital, but he was falsely accused of involuntary manslaughter, so, so they fired him. Can you imagine that? Did you suspect anyone? I told you, the chief physician, of course. Haven't you ever seen a detective drama? Ah, uh, detective drama? All right, oh man, I need a coffee. Hmm... This guy either is faking it by assuming the oh, I was just chilling and I saw it on TV, or he just doesn't know anything because he just saw something from a movie. This guy gave me quite an elaborate explanation on everything that's been going on. Like, hmm, this person is a newbie. Hmm, what about you, Mia? What are you? You don't understand how awful it was. If it were just a dead body, I wouldn't have been so shocked. I've seen more than a few of them over the course of my career. But in my office? Before my third cup of coffee? <laughs> What's the world coming to? <laughs> how am I doing, Finley? Am I convincing? You're doing great, but you need to stay in the character. Oh yeah, oops, hey hey. Ahem. <clears throat> I'd like to ask you about the incident. Yes, of course. I think we all want to get to the bottom of this. And as soon as possible, too. Where were you at the time of the murder? I'm busy, so keep it short. Very well, I'll be brief. Where were you when the incident happened? I wasn't in the building at the time of the incident. I'd already left, early yesterday evening. I always try to get here as early as possible, as a rule. 
That way I can finish the day's work early too. <coughs> Only today my car broke down, so I didn't arrive until the same time as the rest of the stuff. The breakdown service took forever, but maybe that was lucky for me in the end. Otherwise, it could have been me lying there cold on the floor. Horrible. That does rule me out completely as a suspect though. I see. Did you notice anything unusual? Is there anything else you'd like to add? I just can't stop wondering why it had to be in my office, of all places, and how. The only person with a key besides me was my assistant. And we couldn't stand each other. I don't know what he was doing in my office. As far as I know, he was never in my office unless I was there too. His key was only for emergency. Oops. I misclicked that. I'm just gonna skip this a little bit because I already clicked it. There we go. Do you suspect anyone? If you ask me, it was the nurse anyway. My PA made some nursing cuts a few weeks ago. And I've heard nothing but comp complaints ever since. She also has a penchant for being unprofessionally emotional. If you know what I mean. Hmm. Hmm. Something about your statement makes me wonder. You told me earlier that you and your PA couldn't stand each other, right? That's correct. Interesting, especially as I've heard from various sources that the two of you got along very well. That... That is a well speculation. And anyway, it should make me even less of a suspect, if anything. <clears throat> huh. True, I lied. But I only did it for the sake of my image. I don't want to be the kind of boss who's known for... For playing favorites, so I treat everyone the same. Hmm. What do you think of the ambulance driver? I don't think I've ever talked to him. I don't think I've ever talked to him. I don't interact with most of the employees here on a regular basis. If you know what I mean. <coughs> Tell me about the new doctor. She hasn't been here long, just a couple of months, but she's proven a good fit. I was a little skeptical at first, but because I didn't know if she was assertive enough, but it's worked out fine in the end. She's normally very reliable, though I did find a stack of uncompleted files on her desk just today. Hmm. What do you think of the janitor? I'll be honest with you, I've always had the suspicion that he was up to something crooked. He's always creeping around everywhere, crop cropping up where you least expect him. I think he's been stealing, but I don't have a, any proof yet. Hmm. Come back to you later. Please hurry up. Hmm. If she doesn't interact with any of them. Hmm. But everyone said they had a good relation. She said she doesn't. Hmm. Where were you the alleged time of the murder? Why do you think about the ambulance driver? We used to smoke together. That was pretty nice, actually. He's quiet. He's quit now, so we don't see each other often anymore. But he's also been a little weird recently. Maybe he wants a job or something, but he's been chasing the PA around a lot. Why, why do you think about the new doctor? I think she's avoiding me, but I don't know why. <laughs> Big misunderstanding. Do you know anything about the chief physician? Well, I don't think my boss would kill anyone. He has a lot of money and a nice apartment. Why would she ruin all that? Nah, nah I don't see her doing that. Hmm. Yeah, whatever. The chief physician story makes me wonder. Do you know how your chief physician felt about her assistant? And where was she today? I don't know what kind of relation my boss had with the chief P, uh, PA, but she always leaves the building at the same time on Mondays. I think it's because she wants to catch that show about doctors on TV, which is always on that time, but that's what someone told me once at least. I don't know if she's a suspect, but I think she's a smart woman. I don't think she would have killed anyone on her in her own office, where she'd be one of the most obvious suspects, but that's just my opinion. She was cursing her head off when she arrived this morning too. 
because your car broke down. I saw them towing it away. Hmm. Do you think the 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 chief physician and this newbie are in cahoots? You said you got along with all of them, yet I've heard differently. I've been reliably informed that you didn't have a good relation with the murder victim. I've never tried to hide it. Maybe not everyone knew, but that's that but that suited me just fine. Yeah, me and the PA we clashed pretty often. He didn't always agree with my methods and opinions. And yeah, sometimes that made me angry, but that angry enough to kill him? I never do that. No one gets along with every single one of their colleagues, and I'm no exception. That's normal. Hmm. Did you ever speak to the ambulance driver? I've seen him in the corridors a few times, but apart from a friendly nod here and there, you've never really interacted. Hmm. Are you getting along with your chief physician? At the risk of sounding like a phony? I respect her very much and I'm glad to have the opportunity to work under her. I think I can still learn a lot from her. Hmm. What do you think about the janitor? I'm only stay out of this way since my boss pointed out her suspicions to me. I know she's said to keep an eye on him, but I just always get shivers. Down my spine at the idea of having dealing with a criminal. Hmm. Come back later. Yes, I'm happy to help if I can. Hmm. I was told you don't smoke anymore. You said you were taking a cigarette break. But you don't smoke anymore, do you? I, I, I'm not a murderer. I would never kill him. No, I don't smoke, but I am allowed to go anywhere in the hospital. Whenever I want, especially to my own brother's office door. He sounds very defensive. You hear it right. He was my brother. He seems very unstable. And I would never hurt my own family. I'd rather kill myself. He may not have wanted to see me, but I wanted to help. But I can't help that he died before he could change his mind. I know he would have done if I could have just talked to him again yesterday. Hmm. Have you spoken to the new doctor at all? I heard the news when she first started here, but I've never really talked to her. I don't think she liked her PA very much. <clears throat> what do you think about the janitor? He's a nice guy. We used to smoke together a lot because our ships synced up well. They don't sync up so much anymore, but he's pretty reliable and nicer than most of the others. Hmm. What is your opinion of the chief physician? She's sneaky, I'm telling you. Think she's so much better than other people. Just because she can boss us all around. <clears throat> I'm surprised she wasn't kicked out years ago. She's just a bad influence on everyone else. You're blaming her when the dead body was found at her office and you're trying to pitch it on her. Hmm. All right. Oh man, I need a coffee. Hmm. Were you aware that the ambulance driver was actually the brother of the victim? Did I know they were related? Of course, I hired him after all. I'm not stupid. My assistant didn't like his brother very much. We discussed the prospect of firing him on several occasions, but in the end, he said his brother was weird but harmless. In fact, he was a very peace, peaceable person. All the same, he didn't want to talk to him. Hmm. Something about your stay makes me wonder. You told me earlier that your, you and your PA couldn't stand each other, correct? That's correct. Interesting, especially as I've heard from various sources that the two of you got along very well. That, that is a well speculated. Okay, already had this talk. Alright. Something about your statement. What do you think of the ambulance driver? I don't think I've talked to him. I don't think I've ever talked to him. I don't think it, I, I don't interact with most of the... Okay, we already had this conversation before. Um, hmm. Were you at the alleged time of the murder? Did you notice anything unusual? Did you suspect... I'm, I'm ruling this guy out for sure. But this newbie here, were you at the alleged time of the murder? Come in extra early because I'd like to work in peace before the hustle and bustle starts. So I sat in my office all morning, going through patients' records. I have been here long, 
I was eager for a fresh start for my, after my previous hospital, and I get along very well with everyone, but I'm still trying to get up to speed. Do not something unusual, anything unusual. As you may have already know, I'm pretty new here, so I probably wouldn't no even notice if there was something out of the ordinary. That's a weird question. I asked if you notice anything unusual here. I don't know, that felt like she made it defensive to give me an argument on why it wouldn't be unusual if she didn't notice anything. I don't know. And she's looking around a lot. I don't know if her eyeballs have anything to do, but she looks around a lot. People that lies tend to look away. But maybe that will help you provide a more objective view than your colleagues. Yes, I suppose so. Do suspect anyone? I don't want to make any false accusation, but there is one thing as it ha as it happens. The chief physician came to see me a few days ago. She asked me to keep an eye on the janitor. I think he was seen hanging around my floor a few times, heading in the storeroom. Some people suspect him of stealing medication. And have you noticed anything? No, I've never seen him there. But maybe the murder victim caught him in the act. I wouldn't wish that on anyone, truly. Hmm. Do you know how your chief physician felt about her assistant and where was where was this today? I don't know what kind of relationship my boss had with the PA, but she always leaves the building at the same time on Mondays. I think it's because she wants to catch that show, but hmm. She's always on that time, that's what someone told me once. Ha! Huh. How would you know that she always goes for that show? That's what someone told me once at least. You seem like, like you oddly know a lot about someone. I don't know if she's a son, but I think she's a smart woman. I don't think she would have killed anyone in her own office. Where she'd be in one of the most obvious... Or she'd be one of the most obvious suspects, but that's just my opinion. She was cursing her head off when she arrived this morning too, because her car broke down. I saw them towing it away. Car broke down? Did you... Sne did you sneak up on the chief physician to see to check up on her and you noticed she was watching that TV? Did you do something to her car and you're always early? Hmm. Alright. I made my decision. No, I couldn't stand him. But that doesn't make me a murderer. Wait, what? I thought she was the one that's gonna decide. I didn't know I had to talk to her as well. I thought I go to her to for what? If I went around wanting to murder people, I'd have started actually doing it a long time ago. Not that I'm saying I did. Fact is, he just wasn't a nice guy, and I, as the new doctor, I should tell you. He really had it in for her. That's more of a motivation to kill him than I've ever had. Besides, I was only on duty another I was only on duty on another ward all night, so I couldn't have killed him anyway. I have some questions for you. Like I said, I was on duty. I don't know exactly when he was killed. But you're welcome to talk to all the patients in the ward. I spent a lot of time there that morning. Having a very long conversation with a woman in room 7. She didn't feel well and she really wanted to talk to somebody about it. Not to mention giving them her whole whole life story. Did you notice anything unusual? I remember wondering about the light. The light that was on in the chief physician's office. So that was something in the early morning. Early morning? And the bird was there in the early morning. Do you suspect anyone? No, I didn't see anyone. Or wait. The janitor. I saw the janitor on that floor. He said he was looking for a ladder for some repair work. Unfortunately, I couldn't help him. I had my hands full myself that morning. Hmm. Did the new doctor, doctor really get along with it, with everyone? Because I heard differently. The new doctor? I don't really know anything about her. I wasn't that interested either. I just overheard that she and the PA clashed a lot. Maybe it had something to do with the fact that they came here from the same hospital. The name was similar anyway. But whether they knew each other back then, I have no idea. It's, it's a while since the PA left here. I ran into her several times yesterday. She said she wanted to move some files from her office into the other office. Spent all morning carrying boxes around. Wait, what? I'm sorry. Let me let me read that one more time. That she and the PA clashed a lot. Maybe it was something. They came from the same hospital. Name was similar anyway, but whether they knew each other, I have no idea. It's a while since the PA left here. I ran into her several times yesterday. She said she wanted to move some files from her office into 
into other office. Spent all morning carrying boxes around. Okay. Never mind. Okay. I heard something that it has been implied that you might have had a motive after all. Namely, a personal dislike combined with the nursing cuts. I already told you that I didn't like him. That doesn't mean I killed him. Being temperamental doesn't mean that I'm a murderer. Yeah, he made the nursing the service even worse than it already was. And I could have laid into him about it then. But did I do it? No. Am I sad that he's dead? No. I'm still not a murderer. Hmm. Hmm. What did you think of the ambulance driver? I don't know who that is. Did you never have any contact with each other? No, never. You know, a hospital like this is a pl big place. If I ran around the building all day trying to make friends, do you know what else would happen? We'd have a lot fewer patients and a lot more funerals. That's what. <laughs> Sorry. What did you think about uh, the new doctor? Wait. Or what do you think of the chief physician? I mean, she's my boss. What more can I say? <laughs> What do you think? Tell me about the new doctor. We work on the same ward. The only thing I really remember was that the PA gave her a lot of stick. Most of it uncalled for. But I have no idea if she had a problem with that. Oh, I bet she did. What did you think about the janitor? We get along alright. He's quite a nice guy. Not very talkative, but I think we just both enjoy not having to talk for a change. I often think that the hospital would collapse without him. I've completed my investigation. What do you think? Can you reconstruct the course of the events? Yes, I can tell you what happened here. Oh, fantastic. So, who did it? <coughs> Sorry there, I took off. The case is absolutely clear. There's only one person who could have committed this heinous act. Even though every single one of you had a motive, the solution is crystal clear. It's... The new doctor is guilty. I'm going for it, guys. Only one of you didn't have an alibi at the time of the crime. The chief physician wasn't at the hospital at all because her car had broken down. Her only lie was that she did actually like her PA. The car was towed into the parking lot and seen by plenty of witness. That leaves four other suspects. The nurse alibi is airtight. She was on duty the entire night as attested to by several witnesses, including the janitor. And besides, she isn't temperamental at all. In reality, she's covering for someone else on her team. Unlike the janitor, who also has an alibi, only his alibi was a lie. Yes, he lied, but not because he committed the murder. In fact, he snuck into the nurse's ward to steal medication, which is also illegal, but not the crime we're looking for. That leaves us with two... What? He was stealing medication? That leaves us with two more suspects. The new doctor and the ambulance driver. The ambulance driver had a clear motive. After all, the murder victim was his brother. A brother he didn't love and who didn't, who didn't want anything to do with him. However, at the time of the murder, he was sitting outside his brother's office, waiting for him as witnessed by the janitor. Now, all this may seem like a stab in the dark, pardon the pun, but there's only one person who lied about their alibi, and that person is the new doctor. She claimed she was in her office all morning correcting files. A rookie mistake. The nurse saw her carrying boxes around the hospital all morning. Okay. Oh, that's true. Yeah, 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 that's true. I knew that. <laughs> so why would she lie? The answer is obvious. Because she was the one who committed the murder. Why, you ask? The answer is quite simple. She and the PA had history. And not just any history, she was involved in the incident that lost the PA his previous job and followed him to this hospital driven by bitterness and revenge. But I still have one question, good doctor. That you committed the crime is clear for all of to see. But why did the PA have to die? I don't know what you're talking about. These are all baseless lies. I left my office to move some files. It just slipped my mind in all the excitement. So if we were to look through the, these files, you would, would we find them completed? You did spend the whole morning on them, after all. I admit I had trouble concentrating that morning. So much trouble, in fact, that you haven't even started on a single one of the files. You claim to have completed the chief physician notice this herself. Perhaps you should have come up with a better alibi. I, I can't believe you think I'm so stupid. The sheer audacity, my last murder was so challenging. 
that not even the police could solve it. What should have been my masterpiece? What instead attributed to an idiot? And you have the nerve to call me stupid. The the last murder? Aha! So we are presented with the solution to our riddle. The PA was fired from the hospital where he worked because he was suspected of involuntary manslaughter. But nothing could ever be proven against him because he didn't do it. Ironic, then, that his false accusation has now led to his own demise. You committed the perfect murder and instead of getting away with it, you followed him all the way here just to get revenge. You wouldn't understand how an artist's mind works. He stole my work and when I saw him snooping around the chief physician's office, it became clear he was nothing but a phony. He'd only have done the same thing again, rested on other people's laurels. Well, you'll certainly have plenty of time to rest on your laurels. In prison? <laughs> Hey, well, I didn't think of all those details, but I did think it was her, so I got that much right, right? Oh, they're just playing. Hey! So, what did you think of the snow? The snow? Hmm, well, if you think, if you can even call that a chammy acting of show. Oh, I, I oh, show, I said snow. Then I'd, st I'd say it was pretty straightforward. The solution was obvious, of course. That bunch of amateurs made it easy for you. Hey, that's not very nice. Niceness has nothing to do with it. It's obvious about acting. The only thing that keeps us grounded in this world. Do you have any tips for me? I don't know if it's worth the effort. I can't really spare the time. I must leave now. Farewell. You don't have any tips, do you? <laughs> Hello? The statue's not answering anymore. That was great, Finley. Am I, am I gonna say anything? Oh no! The chat is... Oh. Oh. I thought the conversation was gonna keep going. Never mind. Whew, that was exciting. My knees are still knocking. The way you solved the murder. Awesome. I'm going to, I'm going to get going now. What about you guys? I'll, I'll stay here in the fresh air for a while longer. Penny, do you have a moment? Alright, get home safe then. Night night, crime busters. <laughs> I didn't know it was about a murder. Sorry, I hope that wasn't too much for you. I really enjoyed it though. Without you, I probably wouldn't have come. Thanks for getting my mind off things. Ah. Finley, I don't know how you're feeling right now. I don't know what it's like when somebody dies on you for the first time. But I have to assume that it'll happen to me sometime too. And I'm pretty scared of it. Terrified actually. But it's also part of the job and a good doctor. Needs to be able to handle it. Hey, it might never happen to you. You're a great doctor. I think that's unrealistic. Hmm. But when it happens, I want to be ready. What are you thinking right now? Not much. All I want to do right now is sleep. And thank you for joining in. I wouldn't have had the nerves for it without you. Maybe you'll want to do it again in the future. But next time, I want to be the, de I want to be the detective. I'd be honored to have you solve my murder. Hehe. <laughs> I can imagine. I want to keep going? I can imagine. I'm sure you can. And if you're struggling, you can always come to me. Just like I do with you, hehe. <laughs> but I'll be alright too, I think. But with this and with life here in general, I... I think I like it here. The people, the little streets, the hibernation festival is great. I think I could feel at home here. Especially with a partner in crime like you. Oh. Let's make sure that as few people die here as possible. That's the deal. Deal? Yes. Deal. That's a nice way. Damn. Damn, guys. That was interesting. I didn't think of all the details, but hey. I found out. I found the right person. Let's go. I can't wait to get a good night's sleep. Good night, world! Wow. That was fun. That was quite fun. Am I, am I dreaming? Okay, I'm not dreaming. Alrighty, guys. This is the end for the video. Thank you for watching. If you enjoyed it, then I look forward to seeing you guys joining me in the next video. Thank you. Bye-bye.